Hey guys, I am Daisho and I am here bringing you a Return to Ravnica set preview and basically the goal here is to go over limited and just look at all of the Return to Ravnica cards and see how I think the format's going to go. So I kind of just started getting into Magic and I've only done a couple of sets where I've actually looked at them from when they've been spoiled and everything. So I actually brought a couple of people with me to help me out. Why don't you introduce yourself? What's up internet? I'm Garab. Hello, interweb people. I am Andrew. And uh, those are those are my friends. So we're going to get started and just go right ahead and, and I'll read to you guys the first card of the set, Angel of Serenity. It is a four, white, white, white. Its abilities are really long, but I'm going to go read them all real quickly. It's a five, six flyer, and it ability its ability reads, when Angel of Serenity enters the battlefield, you may exile up to three other target creatures Card, target creatures from the battlefield and or creature cards from graveyards. When Angel of Serenity leaves the battlefield, return the exile card to their owner's hands. So I don't think that we really need to spend too much time on this card because it's obviously just really, 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 really good. If you ever open this card in your first pack, you're definitely, definitely going to take it. And uh, I don't know, I don't think that you're going to be switching colors for it pack three. It's, it's probably that powerful, but it's just going to be too hard to build a deck that way. What do you guys think? I mean, the card is just absolutely insane. Uh, although it has three colored mana, there is a lot of fixing in Return for Ravnica, but not enough that you'll likely be able to splash it or move into white lead. So I do agree with you there. Uh, the only thing I want to point out is there is instant speed bounce in this set, so you can in fact do the shenanigans with it where you bounce it in response to its enter battlefield trigger. Yeah, so the reason why that actually works is because it enters the battlefield and the trigger goes on the stack, and then you remove it, so then the second ability of it, when it leaves the battlefield, that trigger happens before the creatures are actually exiled. So then they just get exiled, and then there's really nothing to bring them back. So that's also, why that on the off chance that this thing ever is removed, which is not likely unless you have um, the monocolor removing spell, we'll get mm -hmm. to it later in black, uh, Unless this thing is removed, uh, I mean, if, even if it is, it's a little bit better than like an O-ring type angel. I called this thing Angel of O-ring when I first saw it, but it actually returns these things to, your, to the owner's hands instead of back to where they came from. Mm -hmm. uh, so it, it can do some kind of silly shenanigans with that, because you can bounce creatures if it ever dies, which is makes it just that much stronger. Right, so it doesn't it doesn't completely wrath them if they can get their cards back, but it just puts them all back in their in their hand. So if you bounce like a couple of five drops and a four drop, then it's actually going to take them a couple of turns to even replay those, and by then you'll probably have one. And God forbid you ever face an opponent with two of them, because they will just cycle back and forth between the two, and one hits graveyard. Luckily it's a mythic, so that's very unlikely to happen, but it's possible. Mm. All right, uh, let's move on to the next card. Armory Guard is a, it's three and a white. For a two five, as long as Armory, uh, Armory Guard has Vigilance, as long as you control a gate. So I'm just gonna briefly say what a gate is. A gate is a land that basically comes into play tapped and taps for either of the guild's colors. There are five of them and they're at common, so they're not gonna be very, very easy to pick up and they're probably gonna be decently high picks. So you you probably won't get more than three in any deck, or not in any deck, you may get it eventually, but you won't get you won't get more than that on on a regular basis. So there's a good chance that this guy won't have vigilance, but he he still might. So um, we were talking about this a little bit before, and I my argument was that I think this card is going to be really good. I think it's going to basically clog up the entire board. And um, we looked it up, and there's only a few cards. There's a, less than really five common and uncommon cards that can actually get past this dude um, on the ground, and. I thought that was really relevant, but then Garrett pointed out something. Uh, I mean, the fact is, it reminds me a lot of Pillarfield Ox from M13, which did not see much play in Limited, uh, in that it's just a big, dirtily ground blocker for four mana. But I do agree with Daisho in that uh, there are fewer cards in Return to Ravnica that can get past it on the ground. However, in Return to Ravnica, there aren't going to be too many decks looking for this type of uh, defensive creature. Uh, it, however, uh, Azorius-based flyers will definitely want something like this to clog up the ground and get in there and there. Yeah, Azorius has a lot of uh, mid-range to late-game type of cards. With a lot of the detain cards are going to be that kind of card, and you'll see detain a little bit later. It's the uh, Azorius guild uh, mechanic. Uh, but even with these kinds of things, you want to like most of these cards want you to get into later games, especially if you have. You're not going to have Angel of Serenity, but if you have any other kind of like big drop you want to get to, Armory Guard could help you get there. It's just 
not always the greatest thing you want out of your 4-drop. Right. It, I mean, it doesn't add too much power to the board for a 4-drop, but if it does have Vigilance, then you can basically just continually beat in. They can't really block it too profitably unless they have a lot of power on the board, in which case they definitely can. They could probably trade, like, one creature for it. But if they don't really have anything to, to beat it, then it can sometimes just completely stop them. If they're playing, like, really aggressive Rakdos decks and they're unleashing all their cards, then and then they're 4-4s, then... It's just a little bit awkward because you get to beat them in the face for two, they can't block, and then they can't attack past you. Mm -hmm. Alright, so I didn't I didn't explain this yet, but we're basically going to give cards not a complete rating, but we're going to say either they're extremely awesome, this is going to be the, just the top few cards in the in the set, then we're going to go say this card is good, you, really, you kind of want to pick this up, then there are cards that are okay, you're willing to play them, and then there are just <coughs> unplayable cards. So that's that's basically the rating we're going to give this one. I'm going to say that this card is um, kind of borderline okay, good. Um, it's not one of the t the first four picks that you're going to take, uh, even if the pack, unless the pack is extremely weak. But you definitely are happy playing this card. And I'm going to say that this card is just okay. I personally see something like this tabling almost every time. You should be able to get it 9th to 11th or 12th pick. I was just about to mention that. I think this is a card that you're going to be happy to have table. Mm -hmm. And you're going to have that that option often. All right. so they both they both rated a little bit lower than me, but who knows who's right. Anyway, Arrest. Next card. 2 and a white. Enchant creature. Enchanted creature can attack or block, and its activated abilities can't be activated. So obviously this card is basically just white removal. It's an uncommon which is good, otherwise it would be absurd. It used to be a common. Oh my god, this card back in Scars of Meriden Limited was insane at common. It makes complete sense that they upped it here. Right, so, I, th I mean, it's just it's just a very good card. Shutting down one of their creatures is really powerful, especially for three mana. It's two and a white, so you can splash it if you need to. It's, it's just really good. If you see this card in Limited, you almost always will take it. You will splash it. And th this is the reason to go into white. Unlike, yes. unlike Angel, if you have it late, this is the reason. Yeah, you, you, de could. you definitely want to pick this up, especially since you have the ability to splash it, and if you can pick up a few white cards, and maybe you just move into white in general. Alright, so the next card, Avenging Arrow, is also some white removal. It's two and a white for a common, instant, destroy target creature. That dealt damage this turn. Note that it's dealt damage, not was dealt damage. That's how I originally read it. I thought it was a lot worse than it is. But basically, if this card just ever swings, it, if it ever attacks or blocks, and assuming it doesn't have zero power or toughness, then you can you can kill it. So it's not going to hit their utility creatures, but it's going to hit their creatures that are beating you. The problem is they get one attack out of their creatures, so it can either trade with something, deal some damage. So it's not like you're completely getting a one-for-one, one, but it's, it's pretty close, and it's pretty much the closest thing that you get to in white uh, of removal outside of arrest. In, in my mind, this reminds me a lot of Divine Verdict from the core set, uh, except this is one less, and all it does is they have to do damage before you can kill it. But for one less mana, it's not exactly that large of a trade-off in my mm -hmm. mind. I feel that this card is going to be very strong, considering uh, white is lacking in instant speed removal at like the three or four mana spot. It has more instant speed removal higher up the curve, but it's going to be very good. The only thing with this card is that you need to play it correctly. There are many ways to make misplays with this card. Like, what do you think? What do you think of when you say that? Like, m like if you are in combat and you see like, oh, these creatures are attacking me. Uh, I could take damage from them. I could block them. A lot of people will overthink using this. Uh, they won't. A lot of uh, newer players will not realize that it doesn't matter if it deals combat damage to a creature or a player. And a lot of people, at, the, at least at the beginning of the format, will confuse this card with how you first read it. If the uh, creature was dealt damage rather than has dealt damage. Right. And, and a thing that I, I was just thinking about, I don't know how relevant it'll be, but if you can sacrifice a creature mid-combat, then it's important to note that the creature that it blocked didn't deal combat damage. Even or, though it was still blocked. Right, it was blocked, but it still didn't end up doing damage, and then Avenging Arrow won't kill anyone, and you'll just be really sad. My favorite thing I want to do with this is, there's that one, uh, there's the two-drop 1-1 one, one double strike dude. I really want to kill him after first strike before he does normal combat damage, because I think it'd be hilarious, especially <laughs> if, he's like, if he's up against someone with like two toughness, I think it'd be the greatest thing ever. That'd be pretty sweet. We'll talk about we'll talk more about that guy when we come up to him. 
Right. Okay, so now let's move on to the next card. This is Azorius Arrester. It's one and a white for a human soldier. It's a common. When Azorius Arrester enters the battlefield, detain target creature and opponent controls. So this is the first detain card that we've seen, so I'll read uh, the entire text for it. Until your next turn, that creature can't attack or block, and its activated abilities can't be activated. So you'll notice that that text is basically the same, I think, as Arrest. So you basically get to arrest a card for, for one turn. That's why it's a Zorius Arrester. Huh. Right. Clever Cute. wizards. <laughs> this is probably the best detained card because of its cost. I think this is the cheapest detained card. I don't know about uh, the... Not, not best. I would not call it the best. There, there, is, re there is repeatable detained cards later right. on. Um, but this is... I, if I, I think I'm correct in saying this is the cheapest detained card. Um, it it's is also tied for cheapest. Yeah. There's another two drop detained. There's another two drop detained that's not on a creature. Yeah, it's in blue. Right? Uh... What I would say about this card is that although it looks very good, it's a one in white, two one that's right on curve with what you want to be playing, detains things. That's awesome. The only issue is usually you want to detain things later on in the game when the, more of the mid rangey creatures come down. And uh, this card wants to be played early as a creature. You have to trade off do you want your two power when you're supposed to get your two drop? Or do you want to save it for later and so you can detain it? In something? my mind, that's not a bad thing. In my mind, it's saying that this card's always relevant. That's true. Yeah. If you have a two, if you have, if you're playing a two drop two two later on, like on turn seven, it does nothing for you. Whereas this guy does. He's a body if you need to chump block something, and he also detains something if you need to get in. Right. So that's good that he has, that he still has value in the late game because that I think that was a huge problem in M13 with the Bears. They're all like two twos, and if you played a Walking Corpse turn five, then the, your opponent has six different creatures that can just completely outclass it. But that just gives this guy late game uh, use, and then that'll that'll just be that'll be pretty good. The, but what one thing is so yeah, I agree with Garrett. You kind of want to play detain like sleep in that you don't want to use it at the beginning of the game. You want to use it at the end when you can um, kind of win. But also, this guy isn't really, he also suffers from like War Priest of Thune, where you don't really want to be playing it on turn two, but you don't really want to be playing it later either, because if you play it on turn two, like best case scenario, you're preventing a two drop from attacking, and I don't even know, I don't e I haven't looked too best hard. Best case scenario, you're swinging in with your one drop, and yeah. you get a two drop. <laughs> right, block. right, I was about to say, what, what kind of one drops do we have that are actually relevant? We have relevant? Dryad Militant. Dryad Militant. Oh, we, Dryad Militant. There is a right. cycle of cards we'll get to later that there's a one drop for every guild. In if, you have, if, you have, if you have Rakdos Cackler, then you're <laughs> oh, that's <incredible>. ridiculously <laughs> happy. Yeah. Well, then you're also... If, if you're well, hyper you could, aggro, you then you want this card. Right, right. So, um, it could be really, really awesome, but it's just, overall, it's just going to be a very good card, and I think that it's, it's not quite as good as Avon Squire was in M13, but I think it'll definitely be good. Love right. Avon Squire. Azurius Justicar. Two white, white for an uncom... Just this year. Just this year? Just this year. Just this year. It's just a car, bro. It's just a card. I'm not um, <laughs> All right, so it's an uncommon. When it, Azuri's Justice here enters the battlefield, detain up to two target creatures your opponents control. So this is basic. <laughs> Everyone around me is uh, is just just making some motions, exclaiming that they are very happy. Um, <laughs> they seem to really really love this card. I think that it's pretty cool. But I I mean, especially since you're getting really three effects for one card, which is pretty awesome. Towers of Occasion is amazing, not only because you get two, two two flyers, which is just completely relevant. But it's because you get to have, play two spells for one mana and uh, for one card, and that's what you're doing here. So you, you're getting the two two, who, who is kind of like a relevant body, not extremely relevant, and you basically get to make sure that their creatures um, don't get to attack you, and you can swing past. And them. the best part of, about him, he's a lot like the arrester, but you're always going to play this guy on curve if you have the option. Right, the, that's true. It's he's, so it's so rare that they're not going to have something you want to detain on your fourth turn and make it profitable for you. Right, so if you can play a 2-2 two -two or a 2-power guy in turn 2, even another 2-power guy in turn 3, playing this guy, this guy the next turn and detaining two things is just going to be such a beating. You're just going to be able to get in for so much more damage than they thought you would have. It's just going to ruin all their plans. It's going to be... Uh, I think changes it's going to be a clocks. Real, Yeah, changes the clock in insane exactly. amount. And it'll change the clock at any point in the game. The only thing I want to add on to this is that uh, while in many other formats this card would just be solidly good, the fact that it is a body while just a 2-2 for 4 body in Return to Ravnica 
is very important because of the Golgari scavenge mechanic, which we'll get to later, that makes everybody into a relevant body. Everybody's a relevant body. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> anyway, moving on. Yeah, all right. Let's go to Bazaar Kravad. I definitely pronounced that wrong in some way. But <laughs> the he... Bazaar part correctly. Yes. Nice work. That was really bizarre. <laughs> it's uh, it's four and a white for an uncommon beast. When it attacks, another targeting, uh, another attacking, cre another target attacking <laughs> creature gets plus O plus two until end of turn. Untap that creature. So obviously the dream is just to have two bizarre cravats swinging in um, at the same time, pointing at each other and saying, "Yay, we both have vigilance now, and they're never gonna block us." They're but uh, that kind of dream is probably a probably not gonna happen because it's that uncommon, and b not really the most ambitious dream you. Can have <laughs> but uh i i don't know I, I i could definitely see a couple of games being won by that but um anyway i don't really think that it's it's that much better if not any better than uh armory guard was it that yeah armory guard was which was also a two five just the one more mana is really really important i think and i mean it's cool and i think it's going to be really awesome to be playing against aggressive decks with white because you're always going to have access to a two five if you need it and with some sort of vigilancy type ability, so I think it'll be okay. But I don't know how I don't know how useful it'll be. It's very important to note that unlike the armory guard before it, it itself can never have vigilance. Uh, it requires some other creature in order to give that one pseudo vigilance. But it itself, as after you swing in with it as a two five. It's now a tap 2-5. It cannot target itself. It's right, not right. what you want to be doing with a 2-5. Personally, I do not like it very much. I mean, Armory it, Guard's a common, this one's an uncommon, and I just like Armory Guard so much more. This card also only gives you value if you already have another attacking creature, which mm -hmm. you don't always want to be doing. Uh, I prefer the other one to this a lot more. Um, I, I think if, you're, if, you, if you want a 2-5 body, the other one's stronger. Yes. All right. I do think that, that it did make sense for them to make this one an uncommon as opposed to the other one, because I think if they if these ran rampant through the format, then you'd be seeing a lot of people swinging in with two sevens, having them untap, and their opponents just can't block them, can't attack them, and they're just yeah. frustrated. It, well, it'd be ridiculous, especially if you get later on with like the guild mages or anything that has a tap to activate ability, mm -hmm. um, because then you can swing in with that body and tap to do its ability both. Usually you only get that one choice. Or you can tap it twice. Right, same turn. Yep. Oh, wait, no, it has to attack. Never it has mind. to attack. Never, Never mind. That, that would not okay. work. Okay. Um, all right. So, Bizarre Krovod, We I think we all agree it's kind of more in the okay range. Um, you, you'll you probably play it if you need to, but you definitely don't. You're not, like, thrilled about this card table. It's, it's going to be, like, your 20th card. But hey, <laughs> if you get five of them, you get five of them. <laughs> yeah, if you get five of them. <laughs> you go for the long <laughs> game at that point. All right, let's move on to the next card. Two cost, one three flyer. That's it. It's just one and a white for a flying one three. It's Concordia Pegasus. It's a common, and I'm gonna I'm gonna let Andrew talk about this one first since he uh, seemed really excited yeah, about it. Yeah, I like this card. This card is one of the cuter cards in the set. It's definitely cute. If you look at the picture, you'll uh, you'll know what he's talking about. Also, the fact that it's it's so relevant. The fact that it has three toughness. Uh, mm -hmm. A lot of flyers, a lot of flyers in this set have one or two power, um, and just. Uh, you won't get into like a three power flyer until extremely higher up in the curve. The fact that it's a two drop one three, you're going to be giving in for one. Um, or you're going to be holding back and you're going to hold back their two one flyers. Um, I just think this guy is going to be really good, especially, I mean, white looks dirtily so far. Uh, <laughs> and this is going to be a nice dirtily flyer that could get in if you need him to, because he does have the evasion. Right, so the reason I don't really like this card too much is because the drop-off between two power and one power is so significant, you're basically never going to kill somebody with one Concordia Pegasus. Um, it's it's a lot worse than, I don't remember the card from M12, Griffin Sentinel? Griffin, Griffin Sentinel, Sentinel, yep. Um, which was three cost? It, it was three. It was three cost, extra. but it had Vigilance, so this card just wants to be blocking, and um, I don't really like to play Magic where I'm just playing creatures just to block. I want them to have some sort of offensive power. You don't but like actually. I'm not. No, I mean it depends. It depends on the deck. Um, Kraken Hatchling and obviously Fogbank can be awesome if you're building a, like a really controlly deck. And I, I guess this card, this card definitely has that upside too. I'm not saying that it's a bad card. I'm just saying that it doesn't do exactly what I want it to be doing, which is 
as a two cost flyer, I want it to be attacking. I want it to be a Stormfront Pegasus, not a Concordia Pegasus. <laughs> I personally just love the card. Uh, there, not only is it important that the one three blocks like all the two power flyers, it also blocks all the early game two power everything's. That's true. It does block both of the uh, arresting type people that we've seen. It mm-hmm. blocks both of the two fives we've seen. Um, the only creature that kills it so far that we've seen is the uh, Angel of Serenity, <laughs> and you're okay with that at that point. But, I mean, the fact that it's a two-drop, so you play it early on, and then it holds down the fort for a while, and then later in the game you can pump it in ways if you find pump, and just have it be an evasive body, seems pretty good to me. Yeah, if you can get some pump on this guy, then it's awesome, because then you just get the body out early, and then it starts attacking and beating them for late. So Speaking um, of pump... <laughs> yeah, well, let's let's first go ahead and say what what we think oh, of this sure. card. I I don't really know what do you what do you think, Andrew? Where I, does it fit in? I would put it. Um, it's definitely not going to be your first five or six picks. But if you're already if you have white already, I'd say play this card. This is not something you would splash for. Right. But, um, go ahead. I'd put this as playable. Playable. So more um, more in like the okay range. I'd put it slightly above okay. Like I, okay. I I'd be happy to see this card if I'm in white. Okay. Mm-hmm. I completely agree. I completely agree with that assessment. This is a card that I want to have in my deck if I'm in a white based deck. Uh, I mean, white wants to have blockers so they can do silly things with tokens and other shenanigans. Okay, so like, let's say let's say you've taken four or five white cards already and no other color, and then you see a card that's like actively good. Or this card? Are you willing to just say pass this card and take the good card it and move into the second color, or I'd do you want to go just for the good card? Right. It, okay. it, it, in my mind, it depends what the other cards are. If right. they're if they're a bunch of smaller drops, I'll go for the good card. If I have something, you know, I want to be getting to every game, I'd rather play this card. Okay. So, but this card, you guys both agree that it doesn't just go in dirtily defensive decks. It also goes in like the aggressive. Right. Dex. As long as it's not hyper aggressive, I completely agree with that. Okay, cool. So I think I think we really got uh, got our opinions out on that one. I'm glad. Anyway, ethereal armor. Ethereal. One, no, ethereal. <laughs> uh, kind of like uh, become. I think it actually is ethereal. It's ethereal. Become ethereal. It's. I ethereal. think it could be ethereal. Well, what we should do is not review the cards anymore and instead review their pronunciations. I think that would probably be a more interesting show. <laughs> like, we should just do I three entire different set reviews. We should do one where we reveal the names, try to make sure that we get all of them down. One that's the probably, art. yeah, that's probably the best, um, the one that we should do first. And then the next one, which is probably going to be the most interesting one, is where we review the art. We pro- we go down to, like, uh, the art school and, and go find some, some art majors and see. I'll um, draft based on art anyway. <laughs> and, and see and see. Which which cards are actually the uh, the prettiest or whatever? But anyway, <laughs> ethereal armor is it's a one. Real. <laughs> it's definitely real. We know that. Um, it's a one mana enchantment enchant creature. Enchanted creature gets plus one plus one for each enchantment you control and has first strike. So this card reminds me a lot of hyena umbra, but without the totem armor, and that's kind of why I ran hyena umbra. But plus one plus one in first strike is pretty sweet. Um, if you can ever get it to give you plus two plus two in first strike then you're definitely going to be happy with it this It suddenly card. becomes valuable at that point. Yeah. I think plus two, plus two just become, makes it so much more relevant. So I don't I don't really know. What do you think, uh, Garrett? How many decks do you think this is going to go in? Honestly, I see this being played in about half of the white-based aggressive decks for the simple fact that there is actually a like pretty good enchantment sub-theme running throughout the entire set. Like You're going to have enchantments in your decks. As we go on, we'll talk, talk about more of them, but that first strike on this enchantment is very, very relevant. I mean, just slap this on the Concordia Pegasus we just talked about before. You now have, you've now paid one white white for a 2-3 first striking flyer. That's better than Chapel Guys. So well, I like Chapel Guys. It's, it's one white white for a 2-3 first striking two flyer, cards. discard a card. Yeah. Not True. quite, not quite the same. What I like about but it can also grow when you play more enchantments, and it can also get annihilating fired when you play this. And then your sad face. <laughs> what I like about this card is it's a common. If you can pick up more than one of these in any draft, then you're just really happy. Well, I mean, I I completely disagree with that. You just set yourself uh, up for getting so much. Well, I guess you put. Are you saying you put it on different creatures? Yeah, different okay. creatures. You don't want these on the right, same right. creature. Never mind. Yeah, that's um, that's a good point. I mean, if you have, there's one, uh, there's a 1-2 one, that makes a 1-1 one, one flyer when it comes into play. Seller of Songbirds. Yeah, so we'll get there. I think if you have two of these, put those on each one of those things, you're now extremely strong. Yeah. yeah that seems really good. Yeah, so we're saying... It beats that- all your coursers. <laughs> Every centaur just dies. Ethereal armor is 
okay to good at first, but as you see it in multiples, its value exponentially increases. It's like two right. pack wolf in that. So would, would you run four of these in a deck? If I had four of them, I would run four of them. If I had three of them, I would cons- I would consider running three of them and probably do it. If I only had two of them, I'd probably end up shying away from it. If I had two of these and an arrest, I'm playing two of these. Ah, uh, if you have an arrest, arrest is an enchantment too. Right. Like if I have if I have two of these and two other playable enchantments, I'm running both of them. Well, then then you get to the that. point then you get to the point where if you have enchantments and then you, maybe you don't have enough removal and then are you going to really want to play this card if you only have 13 creatures? So well, right. remember it's, that not all enchantments are auras. You could have enchantments that just do things. Right. You can have enchantments who, that are removal to begin with. Like or enchantments that make creatures. We'll see those later on. Ah, <laughs> yeah, th- this, this isn't always going to be played, but I think it's often going to be played. I okay. think it's deceptively powerful. Deceptively powerful. I mean, the one mana investment is definitely. Auras, good. auras have a bad connotation to them because they off they can't they they can get two for one, mm-hmm. um. But if they don't, then I think it's very valuable. But if you look at M thirteen, we finally saw a uh, creature enchantment seeing a good uh, amount of play mark of the vampire game. volcanic strength tricks of the trade oh rancor tricks of the trade like rancor is a little okay. different slap that different. tricks of the yeah. trade on a kraken hatchling all day yeah <laughs> tricks of the trade I really don't think saw that much play I, I just mark of the I vampire just think did. it was that good but anyway eyes in the skies <laughs> three and a white instant common put one put a one one white bird token with flying onto the battlefield so that's a really good card right we're gonna just stop right there okay fine I'll read the rest and then it says then populate so now let's read populate and read it very carefully because I always forget what this does. Put a token onto the battlefield that's a copy of a creature token you control. Okay, so that means, uh, let's just clarify this. Put a token onto the battlefield that's a copy of a creature token you control. So you get to choose one creature token you control and copy it and put a, a second one. It is good to note that I saw a rules text about this where it does not target that creature. Mm-hmm. Right. It um it does a very similar thing to Phantasmal Image. It just enters as a copy. Yep. It's yeah. a cloning. It's um, a clone of it. And so if they were to remove uh, a token in response, it can still come in as a if you well, have another token. Well, yeah. The thing, yeah, the thing is, um, when you cast this spell, like, there are no targets. Um, and then once once you gain priority, the entire spell resolves. So you you can't have it where you play a one one bird and then they bolt it or whatever they get rid of it and then you don't get to populate anything. You're automatically going to get both birds mm-hmm. at face value. This is four mana for two two flying power, uh, split up into two creatures, which I personally think is very strong, especially at common. Yeah, I mean midnight haunting speed. Yeah, Midnight Haunting was awesome. I think the instant in speed, instant speed is what makes this card playable in my mind. Yeah, I think instant speed is what makes especially this card because, highly playable. Especially because you can you can uh, instant speed make a three three, and that's what you're mostly going to be populating in. Oh, it populate is the Celestia mechanic, and that's what you're mostly going to be populating is I, the three three. I don't centaurs. I don't know about mostly. I mean, best case scenario, I'll agree. I mean, obviously, scenario, obviously, the best case scenario is is an eight eight vigilance, but <laughs> that's not going to happen. I mean, that's not going to happen. <laughs> Rhinos are rarely going to happen. It's going to happen at the pre-release a lot. Their model yeah. worm is going to happen. All of you going to the pre-release, if uh, if you decide to go Selesnia there, you will have your uh, Grove of the land Guardian. that creates an 8-8 token. So keep that in mind. Grove of the Guardian. Yeah, so... Uh, but but generally, generally you're... N- like, not generally you're not going to have anything to populate, but often I will see this just put two birds into play. And it might just be fine at that. I, I, I really think it probably will be. I mean, Midnight Haunting was awesome. It was one mana less, which was three drop for basically the same effect, except they're spirits instead of birds. There was also less of a token theme there. Tokens are very, very important in Innistrad. I mean, a fifth... I mean, right, in Return to Ravnica. I mean, a fifth of the entire cards in this set are... Based. Or Selesnia, they care about tokens. Well, not all the cards in Selesnia care about tokens, but yes, I agree. but they synergize well with them. Yeah. Okay. So um, I think I think we uh, we we all agree that this card is probably well. I, I don't know if we all agree. I'm going to say that this card is good, and I'm definitely going to run it on my decks. I'll easily pick this third through fifth, and mm-hmm. I'll be very happy about it. I'm going to say do not expect to see this table because I don't see this going any later than about. Sixth or seventh, and yeah. the absolute last. I say good. I just want to make a one note that it is. Um, I feel like it's much stronger in Celestia than it is in Azorius. Mm-hmm. In my mind, in Azorius, all you get out of it are two one one chump blockers. Well, you get two one one flyers. That's a lot different than chump blockers. Mm-hmm. That's true. It's also at it's also at four. 
Um, Azorius has better flyers than this. For Celestia, um, you have options. That's what I like about it. Well, I mean, anytime you, anytime you pick up the entire flying deck, then you're happy. And this card is just helps. That's true. Like you're not but, you're not gonna say, okay, I'm gonna cut my eyes in the sky for a two three flyer. It's never it's never a bad card, but it's better in Celestia. Okay, it's I all, definitely it's, agree. It's it's it definitely has added value when you get to do token shenanigans. Right. So now let's talk about another card that has added value if you put it in a certain deck. Fencing Ace. So he is a two cost, one one double strike. So for all of you who are like he's a one one, he sucks. Double strike basically means that he's a bear. So he's he's sort of like a two cost two two, but he has upside. I mean there, there's downside in that he could be killed by spells that do one damage to him. And Concordia Pegasus. This is another cute card in my yeah. life. Speaking of Concordia, and he Pegasus. and he does he does also get completely walled off by a Concordia Pegasus, where a uh, a bear would just bounce. But um, anyway, this card is really really awesome with the Golgari mechanic scavenge, and I think that pretty much everybody when when they saw Fencing Ace, they're like, how can I abuse this card? And um, then they gave a scavenge. So they made this card an uncommon. I think that was pretty wise because otherwise it would just be all the fencing aces, all the scavenge, screw normal Selesnia mechanics. I'm just going to build the fencing ace deck. But since it's an uncommon, you probably won't expect to get more than more than one of these, maybe two if you're lucky. And then um, just trying to pick up all the scavenge just for this probably won't end up being worth it. But I think it's definitely still going to be a card that's just going to make your, your white decks all the time. That said... If you have a bunch of these and not too many ways to pump their power, you're, or yeah, pump their power, pumping their toughness doesn't matter too much. I mean, it has double strike. But if you don't have too many ways to pump it, it can get shut down by many things in this format. You need to be a little wary when just going into draft and going, I'm going to pick up all the fencing aces. Even if you pump it once, it can still be like stab wounded or annihilating fired. Um, I mean, at any time, it could be ultimate priced. Dies uh, to removal is. Dies to removal. That's true. Um, a lot of people, I think, are going to compare this card to Warclant Mastiff. This is um, much better, though. I, I agree. Don't, I don't think anyone's going to compare it to Warclant Mastiff. No, I, at, first, at first. Like, not I, at first. Uh, like, you know, okay. when they first see it, it looks like a Warclant Mastiff type card. If you, if there was no pump, that's what it is. Um, no, I mean, it still has two power. It's also It's also strike. a two drop. I mean, it's a Warclant yeah, type but, card. But a two drop, two two is a lot better. The, than the significant one difference one. here is that there is pump. Right. Um, it's like still going to be... The, the thing that I and really want to do is just giant growth him and then just swing in for eight. <laughs> yeah, they did reprint giant growth him. That's, that's not really going to be fair. Or, you know, and Selesnia charm. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you do a or trample. Yeah, that's, that's going to be sweet. There's, there's prob I mean, there's probably enough pump to make this card actually really good. Um, but, it, I mean, it depends on the deck. It really depends on the deck. It, and it works well with other cards. You need the synergy to make it work. Right, so you can you can definitely prioritize this earlier in a draft as to later, because if you pick it up towards the end, then maybe you don't have the pump, and then you're kind of scrambling, and you have to pass good cards to take cards that work. Um, so it, I think it, I think this guy goes in your aggro deck. You want to be playing him if you play him turn two, and you play your Azurius Arrestor turn three. You're really happy. Yeah. Um. Well, the Azurius Arrestor was that the two one. The or? two drop two one. Oh, okay, yeah. Oh, if you played the other uh, arresting just dude, this year. Yeah. That'd be like yeah. you mean if you had that turn if you had turn one dried militant we'll get to I think at the end turn two this guy turn three arrestor turn three just you you're just really happy it's like the most happy you can possibly be. The other thing to note is that there are a bunch of X ones in this set and he just poops all over X ones. <laughs> yep. All right, let's move on to the next card. We all think this card's good. I mean, the fencing ace that is. Yes. Um, Keening apparition is a two cost two two bear whatever good happy days common. And it also has Sack to Destroy and Enchantment, so that's, I mean, I think that's just going to be pretty good. It'll hose random rare enchantments that I might be looking at right now, but um, it's still, it's still just, it's like, it's okay. I, I'm not really sure if it's better or worse than War Priest of Thune. War Priest of Thune had the, had the thing going where you could play it on turn two and then not get the effect out of it, or you could play it later in the game and get the effect out of it. Um, this thing has the minus in that you can play it late in the game and still get the effect out of it, but then you don't get the creature. It, it just is like a whole cycle of which is worth it. So, I mean, I just think that they're about equal in, in value. Uh, only thing I want to say is it is better than Silver Chase Fox. I was going to say that. Silver Chase Fox has played a lot in Limited, and this guy is just strictly better. Right. Uh, well... Not like strictly bears. better. Um, this destroys an enchantment. That exiles an enchantment. Yes. But uh, um, and bears are good. Uh, it when, whenever really, you, whenever you get a bear plus, <laughs> if, if you get a bear with things, it's usually good. Yeah. If, if you ever see anything tacked onto a bear, then you're pretty happy. Um, there are there are circumstances where you don't really want a bear. Um, depends on the format. Depends on your type of deck. 
and uh, but generally it's good it's good to assume that bears are going to be good and you're just going to want to be able to basically pick up as many of them as possible all right let's move on to the next card knightly valor it is four and a white enchantment or enchant creature when knightly valor enters the battlefield put a two two white knight creature token with vigilance onto the battlefield Enchanted creature gets plus two, plus two, and has vigilance. So, first thing I want to say about this card is that when I was playing Mark of the Vampire, I noticed that lifelink was definitely awesome, and sometimes it's what won you the game, but a lot of the times what won you the game was putting plus two, plus two onto a creature, because then it just made it so difficult for them to block, because it just, it just gets gigantic. The fact that this card also gives you a knight with vigilance, and gives your creature that, you, your gigantic creature that you're putting this on vigilance, makes this card actually kind of good, but then you also have to take into account that it is four and a white for an enchantment. So by then, they're already going to be set up, they're going to have their instant speed removal ready, and you could just get completely blown out. If you lose this and your four drop, then you're probably just out of the game. So it's just a really, really high risk, and I think I think it's actually still a pretty high reward card. So what do you guys think? Uh, I personally love the card. The only thing is, yeah, you have to be make sure to play it smart and not play it into removal. But if you can get around that removal and just slap this on any random guy, that guy is instantly a mid-range threat. And you have a token that you can populate. And both of them have Vigilance, so they can also stay back and block for you. It just does so many things in one card. I think it does do a lot of things in one card, but the reason why I don't like it as much is because not not any of the things are so relevantly game-changing. Two, plus two plus two in Vigilance is definitely good, and it definitely can win games, but it's not like it's not like it's a really huge threat that there's no way they'll be able to deal with it. The first thing I thought of when I saw this card was Fencing Ace, and just how <laughs> ridiculous that would be, oh, having a Vigilant 3-3 double strike. Um... Well, that's usually not going to happen. They're going to deal with fencing ace because you're going to have him out turn two. It's not till turn five, um, or he'll be walled off by like, some kind of centaur courser, uh, or a two five. Or oh, centaur healer. Sorry, it's the new centaur. It's the healer, um, or centaur <laughs> token. There's still a lot of them, um, <laughs> but I like. I think this card is. Um, it's good. It, it's where it needs to be. It does fall into the similar trap of it's an aura, so it, you can get two for one. It's kind of like a three for one because this one does already give you two for one. Um, sort of. <laughs> it, it gives you the populate another populate target. So now you, if you have a, if you have your uh, eyes in the sky, you have options. You get a one one and a one one or a one one and a two two vigilance. Um, and that's what I like about the populate mechanic is you should have options, so you do what you need to do. Um, and that's the only reason he makes a token. Uh, and the enchant, I think, is very relevant because it pumps in the back. And most, you know, a lot of enchant, I wouldn't say most, a lot of enchantments in M13 didn't do that. Mm -hmm. um, and this one does, and I like it for that reason. Okay, so that uh, being said, I still would not attempt to take this very early on, as you can probably end up seeing this table. I mean, it's a five mana creature enchantment. They have a history of not going too early in the draft. Yeah, it's, it's also at common, so if you're looking for it, chances are you'll find it. I think it's I think it's going to go about as much as Mark of the Vampire did in M13, um, where it could go one of the th first three picks if it's a really weak pack, but chances are you're going to be able to see them 7th, 8th, even table sometimes. Put this on the Concordia Pegasus and be happy. <laughs> put everything on the Concordia Pegasus. Or the Fencing Ace, depending on the cute cards. Put the put this the on the cute card, okay? Put Fencing Ace on the Concordia Pegasus. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, let's move on to the next card. Two white white enchantment, rare. This card's pretty awesome. At the beginning of your upkeep, detain target creature in opponent controls. So this is basically a card, it's basically a rest, but you get to move your rest where Wherever you want every turn and it's and even if they get rid of their creature it still arrests something else it's just it's just a really really strong card and there's, there's just not much to say about it it's just really really good <laughs> it's it's I, I think Daisho said it cr very correctly it was just it's a rest that you can move at the beginning of your turn wherever it needs to be moved. If you play, I mean, if you play a rest on their four drop and they play a five drop that you really want to have arrested, then you're just really angry at yourself for not waiting that one extra turn. But if you have martial law on turn four and they play their four drop, then you're just going to bounce that thing around wherever you need it at the time. Yeah, and something that I just thought about is if, say, they have two creatures that can block your your creatures well, then they can really never attack with both of uh, with one of them because then you just martial law that uh, the one that stayed back to block swing in with your creatures then that one can't attack and then they can only attack with like one creature it's just it's really it's not going to be a race that they're going to win 
and it's going to really, really help you out in, in terms of just winning games. This is an easy first pick. Yeah. Very, very easy, easy first pick. pick. It's like, in limited, it's ridiculous. Yeah, I don't... I don't think that there were any other cards that we've seen um, as other, easily first pickable. Other, except other for the angel. yeah, other than the angel that we're, arrest could be if you have a particularly weak pack. I, I would first pick arrest all the time. Yeah, I mean I'll first pick arrest, but right. I'm going to take I'm going to take martial law over it every time. Well, yes. well obviously, it's, I mean, it's, 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 it's just arrest. a better arrest. The yeah. only time I like arrest more is when I'm just not in white because I will splash. Oh, of I course. will splash arrest every single time I get the chance. Martial law is a much harder splash. I mean, the two You're white not, yeah. mana is very difficult. Thankfully, this set does give you the ability to go into three color, right? Pretty right. easily. I mean, so if, if you're already in green or blue, it's easy to splash for white, right? Mm -hmm. If you're if you're gonna try and do the whole three color thing, then fine. But I don't think that you're gonna be splashing for white. No, really. you will not be splashing for it for double white. All right, let's move on to the next card, which is what I think also a pretty sweet rare. Um, it's four white white for a giant soldier, obviously a rare, I just said that. Um, all damage that would be dealt to you or another permanent you control is dealt to Palisade Giant instead, and it is a 2-7. So it is six mana, and it doesn't just completely end the game when you play it, but what it does do is it sort of has this kind of like, um, what's the name? Safe Passage. Well, I was I was actually gonna say uh, Platinum Angel yeah, it's type very of Platinum fact. Angel esque. <laughs> it's it's pretty pa Platinum Angel esque because they're gonna it's gonna be so hard for them to to just kill it. They need to get seven power on the board, and then if they attack you, then you can just make these awesome blocks, and they're gonna have to because otherwise they're never gonna kill you. So they need to basically attack with seven power for this to do for them to do any damage. There's no more of this. Okay, I have one dude who who you can't block well, and I'm gonna swing in with him for six damage every turn. No, it's not gonna to do anything. You still have to deal with the, the freaking Palisade Giant. So and imagine now if you pumped this guy. Imagine <laughs> if you had Bizarre Cravat with this guy. <laughs> imagine oh, wow. Imagine if you had um the five cost aura on this guy. Yeah. I mean all of these things are just really, really awesome and it, it's just gonna be able to Okay, you're racing back and forth, you're at five, they're at three, and then you just drop this card and you win. But I mean, there are there are certain situations where you're playing against like maybe a Golgari deck where where they have a whole bunch of things that they've already scavenged by the time this guy comes onto the battlefield, and they're just like, okay, I just attack you, and yeah, okay, they can double block and kill one thing, but then Palisade, Palisade Giant dies. So it's it's pretty good, and I think it I think it definitely goes in the good category. But I don't I don't think it's one of the top like 10, 15 cards There's in the set. I think it's really good, but I don't think it's like oh my god, this is you need to take this card every time. I would probably take an arrest over this. There are many cards in this set I will take over it. I mean it's strong, but just note that I mean if you have this and you're focused on dirtling and making them not kill you, eventually they're just gonna assemble more than seven power on board, and then you're just Done. There, there is one thing that um, I wanted to mention about this card. When you, when you mentioned what this reminded you of, I said safe passage. I don't know if you understand why. I think if they, mm -hmm. if they have less than seven power on board, you can swing in with as much as you want, and yeah. everything is favorable for you at that point. Right. If they try blocking, hopefully they'll, they'll you'll be able to kill something. You'll get something through. Then they'll never get seven power on board. <laughs> it, you just safe passage every time you attack if they have less than seven power on board. Yeah, I didn't. I actually didn't think of that, and that that is yep. really really relevant. And I think that's I, I think that's where most of the power of this card comes from. Yeah, I just, agree with you. It, it that, that's, of, that's the instant um, effect this card has on the board state. Right, it does have that instant effect, and it kind of like Odrick's them, where yeah, you don't get to, you don't get to choose the blocks, but none of the blocks are favorable for them anyway. Just be very careful that if you do something like that. They don't have, like, they're not representing some sort of a kill spell, because <laughs> that would be terrible if you, alright, you're like, slam down Palisade Giant, at swing most, with my team, oh wait, you killed my Palisade Giant, at, and now my block, and now your blocks are really good. Oh, that's it's true. If they kill Palisade Giant, then that's true. Right. Yes. If, they, if they had some kind of, like, instant speed pump, then they're just one for one -ing. Right, right. Um, so, but, but then, but yeah, if they have, if they have, if they, have, the, if they can right. kill the Palisade Giant, it can just be such huge blood. So, yeah, Garrett, Garrett's definitely right there. You just have to be sure that the situation is going to be favorable, even if they're representing a kill spell. Um, and maybe if they're representing Avenging Arrow, you don't even want to attack with this guy or block with him or anything. I just, mean, he has no reason that much to attack. He's only two power. Yeah. You may as well just be safe and keep him back. Yep. Mm -hmm. All right, next card. Pretty sweet uncommon. Three and a white for a spirit soldier. 
It's a 2-3, and it says creature tokens you control get plus one, plus one. His so. name is also Phantom General. Yes, and it's called Which Phantom General. you did General. not say. His name is not Phantom General. His name is two... <sighs> His name is Phantom General. Yeah, it was it was it was basically a phantom, so I couldn't read it, so that's why I didn't actually read the granted, title to it. Granted. So, um, um, cre- so creature tokens you control get plus one plus one. Um, you can definitely like first pick this card pretty easily. This gets my if, cute card alert. <laughs> if it's pack one, pick one, you'll be very happy about it because then you can just pick up all of the seller of songbirds, like all of these kind of things that benefit from it. Um, so you can basically, it's like I think it's about as good as Roaring Primadox was in terms of building around, but I think the card is a little bit more powerful. I I can't agree with that. You don't. There think is a huge, this is an anthem huge on a dude. difference. Between three toughness and four toughness on this and Roaring Primadox. Roaring Primadox avoided a lot of removal. Phantom General gets hit by stuff like Annihilating Fire in this right. set. While Anthems on dudes are awesome, especially when they're two threes rather than three twos, because I like Anthem dudes that get to sit back and not mm-hmm. do anything while everyone else swings in, the main issue is your Anthem now can get hit by things that are creature removal. And I know that dies to removal is not the strongest argument, but <laughs> if they remove your an- if they remove your anthem at instant speed while you're swinging in, you're not going to be having a good time. Yeah, I mean, it, it's the same thing. If they're representing a kill spell for this, don't swing in with your three threes if they have a three one first strike. Mm-hmm. That's true, but well, don't let's swing say in three threes if they have a three one first strike to begin with. Well, they become four four. Let's say they don't have, have removal, or let's say they don't want to waste it on this guy. Let's say you have oh. something else. I wouldn't call it a waste. <laughs> it can't be a waste. <laughs> it's not. Uh, this card is definitely really powerful. This, I think we this all is agree the on that. Card. Yeah. If you have Palisade Giant, Phantom General, and like an Eyes in the Sky, you're just gonna win. Well, congratulations! <laughs> you just got all the good cards. That, like, like the first, like scroll. Down you get you get range. rare, uncommon, common. And you just <laughs> won. <laughs> so do that if you get Palisade Giant. And obviously, you general. just have to throw an Angel of Serenity into that mix just to get. The Personally, perfect. I would choose to go for right leg, left leg, right arm, left arm, and head of Exodia, the Forbidden One. <laughs> That would be my favorite combo. Oh, we're talking about magic? Yeah, uh, okay. I don't moving on to talking back about magic and not Yu-Gi-Oh! Because this is a good game. <laughs> Alright, let's go to Precinct Captain, who is also rare. He is a white-white, so that's actually the first co- card that doesn't have colorless mana. Um, pretty crazy, I know. Anyway, it's a 2-2 first strike. Whenever it deals <laughs> combat damage to a player, put a 1-1 soldier onto the battlefield. So if he can ever connect, he's better than a tended knight? This card's really good. Uh, really good is something that I don't know if I would use for him. I would say he's good in, like, again, he's good in the aggro. If you play some kind of detain the turn after you play him, I'm happy. I mean, just the way I feel about it is, but I like two mana two twos. I again, like two mana two twos the first strike. He, I really like two mana two twos the first strike that do other he, things. He's, a, he's a bear double plus. Yeah, he does he's have... He's a bear plus plus. Right. He's, he's like he, a programming he's, he's a bear, but he's also um, white, white, and that's really relevant. I mean, it helps that we have gates, so you could, like, gate turn one, mm-hmm. planes turn two, You also have the him. key runes and the transguild promenades. Right, but, but when, if, you're playing, if you're playing a 2-2 two, right. two first strike turn five, then you're not that happy about it. But, I, agree. I mean, first strike is just always nice, especially since we've seen double strike, first strike, um, the ethereal armor. So there's just a lot of stuff that you can do to give your guards first strike, so then if you have, obviously, first strike, it's a lot better in multiples. So um, putting the white soldier, if you... If you have to populate or um, use a different card, then that's good. There's just a lot of different uh, ways that this card can be useful. But, I I mean, I, it just doesn't jump out at me as, man, this rare is awesome. I think it's just an okay card. I would agree with that. I mean, not not okay in the terms that I was think, uh, I was mentioning earlier. I'll definitely take this card within my first four picks. Mm-hmm. Um, I think it's, it's a good card. You'll want to pick it up if you see it. But it's not like I'm first picking this card over a rest. I mean, there's just a right. lot if, of other cards yeah. that I would if, rather If I see this over. card, uh, if this is my rare in pack one, it's not an instant, like, yes, I'm doing this, I'm going into this mechanic. If I pick up Martial Law, I'm doing this, I'm going into this mechanic. Um, Prison Cabin, for me... If there's not a better uncommon, like it, I'll take most of the key runes over this. I would take a rest over this. Yeah. I'd take probably annihilating fire over this. Um, mm-hmm. I just this guy, you can probably you'll probably will see him third, fourth, or fifth pick. Yeah. Um, and then at that point, we're really happy to see him. Yeah. I mean, I just agree with that. I mean, you can get him first pick and you're happy with it. But like pack two, pack three, you see him in pack one. You see him in your uh, first pick. 
You don't have to take him. He's something that you can pass if you're not already in the base white aggro strategy. All right, and that's actually a pretty good point. If there aren't too many people who are in aggressive white, then maybe you could see this guy going 6 and 7 in pack 3. Um, just because he, he is double white, so people are going to not really want to cast him. All right, let's, just nowhere near as good off curve. Yeah, let's move on to Rest in Peace. It, I'll, I'll read it just for just because I can, but it's pretty much irrelevant in, in Limited. Mm -hmm. um, it's one in a white. When it enters the battlefield, exile all cards from all graveyards. If a card or token would be put into the graveyard from anywhere, exile it. So these kind of cards are really more um, related to Constructed, so it's kind of irrelevant here. It's relevant for Sideboard and Limited as well, but that's only yeah, against I Golgari. Mean, I mean, you could yeah. do it against Golgari or... Um, or like any green deck that has a lot of scavenge, but it's probably not going to be that That's useful. About it. Moving on. Rootborn defenses two and a white for instant. It has populate and creatures you control are indestructible this turn. So this card's pretty good, I think. I mean, it has all of the other populate things that we were talking about. Plus, it also sort of safe passes you. It doesn't protect you from burn and it doesn't protect you from creatures that get unblocked. But I think this card is a pretty good combat trick. Plus, if you can populate, then it's upside. But the really key thing, I think, to evaluate Populate is if you don't have any tokens, would you be terribly unhappy having this card in your deck? And I don't think the answer is yes to that. I think that you could get value out of a card that says creatures you control gain indestructible at the end of the turn. It's very safe passage Yeah. It's very safe Which passage was a card. Uh, the only, I mean, it was the a card, main right? trade-off between safe passage and this I mean, is a safe passage prevents damage that goes straight to your face. This one prevents destroy target creature effects. Right. Right, so and it's honestly pretty strong. I like it. I won't take it very early, but it's a huge role player in the populate deck. I agree. I don't think that we know, or at least I don't know yet, exactly how many token creators, how many populate effects, how many random other cards I want to have in my deck to make an awesome deck work. But I think that we'll figure that out. I mean, we figured it out with like spider spawning and even just how to play flowering lumber knot and whatever. You just there's some decks that need enablers and that need actual things to make the deck run. Yeah, unlike the other populate, so uh, the other populate cards we've seen so far, this gun, this one does not make a dude first. Um, you have to already have the token for you to get full value out of this card. Um, that being said, uh, you don't need to have a token to have this card be good. Uh, I think it's an e it's an easy thing to put into your deck if you're looking for another playable. If you don't have token makers, if you do have token makers, this is definitely playable. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. So let's move on to the next one. Two and a white security blockade. Um, that's the name of the card. I just <laughs> two and a white for a security blockade. That um, enchant enchantment aura uncommon enchant land when it enters the battlefield, put a two two white knight creature with token token with vigilance onto the battlefield. Enchanted land has tap prevent the next one damage that would be dealt to you this turn, not your creatures. So the bottom part of the card is not really that relevant. You definitely wouldn't play it just for that, even if it was like zero mana. Well. Yeah, no, probably if, if it was zero mana. Like, it barely, every once in a while, it's uh, tap one to gain one life, which obviously is not what you want to be doing. But um, and th but it also gets to put a 2-2 two, two with Vigilance onto the battlefield. So I think the two, um, and which also is, in my opinion, not exactly worth a card. It's not, a, it, would, it would not be a card that you put in your deck, a three cost 2-2 two, two, um, White Knight with Vigilance, even though it is a token. But since it has the fact that you can populate it, and uh, it has two effects on one card. I think it's actually just going to be pretty good. Mm -hmm. I mean, I just like it a lot for the reasons that you mentioned. The only other thing I want to... I want to say two more things about it. One, uh, the second ability on it, I love that it works really well as it scales to late game. In the early game, you play this, get a 2-2. In the late game, you're flooding out. Now one of your lands, you don't need to use it to tap all the time. Now you can use it to reduce the damage being dealt to you. It scales really well with the flow of the game. I hadn't the thought about that. The other thing to mention is that it's an enchantment, and the fact is you're not just playing some sorcery that gives you a 2-2. You're playing some card that sticks on the field and helps scale up your cards that deal with enchantments, and there are a bunch of cards that deal with the number of enchantments you control. Okay. So, it's, and it's an uncommon, so you'll, you'll probably pick it up when you see it, but if there are other really, really strong cards in the pack, then you'll want to take those over it. It's a good role player. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right, so Leslie's Century is a three-cost, three-two. It's an elephant soldier, and it's a common, and it has five and a green for regenerate. So regenerate is really not going to be relevant until way, 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 way late game. But that being said, a three-cost, three-two is pretty good. Um, it 
obviously trades with bears and stuff. But if you're playing the detain deck, then this is exactly what you want. You're like, yes, I have power on board, now I attack you. So this card is a card that I think I like a lot more than most people because I think my decks are going to be, a lot of them are going to just be uh, creatures that are just well costed, like two twos for two, three threes for three, this guy three two for three is going to be fine also, and I'm just going to be like attacking you with all, a lot of creatures, and he's just going to be one of the guys coming in. He's just a little elephant guy with his little axe and shield just running at your <laughs> face. What do you guys think? I mean, I actually just really like it. I mean, once again, it's a card that does what you wanted to do in the early game. It has the same power as converted mana cost. I like that in the card in the early game. In the late game, now you can't kill it. Now it has regenerate. <laughs> it scales really well. This card is so weird in my mind. It gets the almost cute. Um, <laughs> just look at it. It's adorable. It's so close to cute. Um, oh, I wouldn't call it cute. I'd call it awesome. Look at that. that art is badass. It's adorable. I think... I don't know. In, in, when I first saw this, I'm like, that's such an irrelevant regenerate cost. Uh, irrelevant <laughs> regenerate cost. You're, you're welcome. Um, and, but a 3 cost 3-2 three is still playable. I probably would rather have, like, if I had to choose this over some things, I don't know what I would like, what I would like to choose over this. Um, I would rather take the, the 2 cost 2-1, two even if it didn't have detain. Um, but I, I don't know. It's, it's risky at that point, because it, in my mind, this doesn't have regenerate. And when it does, you're not exactly happy to have it. Well, um, you are very happy to have it regenerating late game. Like, then they just if, if, can't play if, something. If, like, if you're flooding out, then I enjoy this. Yeah. But I that's mean, the only time. Well, if, if, yeah. if you're losing, I enjoy this card. Well, Duty Bound Dead was just an awesome card. Um, not, Duty I mean, Bound it Dead had, not Exalted. Right, right. I'm not saying just because... but. The fact that it had regenerate, it just made some games go on for forever. Because mm -hmm. even though the regenerate is, I know it's too less, but it still was basically I'm going to take my entire turn to regenerate, and then I'm going to attack you. The Obviously, Duty is, Beyond Dead has a lot of other upsides. I'm not really comparing the cards in that way. I'm just comparing them in that um, they both have late game regenerating abilities. That I agree. The regen is strictly uh, a better. It's, it makes this card strictly better. The fact that it has regen, no matter what the cost is. Yeah. Um, it just in my mind, it doesn't have regen. I agree. Because you're not... I, I mean, mean, I don't know. I can't say. I, I guess I don't really agree because um, you don't really evaluate based on its regen. I, I think I'll agree to that. But the fact that it can just surprise I win now because you can't hurt me anymore is pretty good, I think. The, there, I, is, there is not much that gets around regen, and I would give you that. Um, there's Augur Spree which, uh, and um, Stab Wound, which are the only two that really come to mind right now. Mm -hmm. um, although, it, I mean, although, yeah, although they're both they're common. If they're casting... They activate regen. Right. Well, if they're well, they get they get the minus in the back. It's not kill it. Yeah, yeah but he's just saying regular kill it, spell. like in response to oh. activating regen. Right. So, so this guy, I mean, if the, if they're using removal on him, then he's more than done his job, really. Yeah. Uh, at that point, you are correct. Yeah, if the, if they're um, wasting their removal on a three mana three two, it's pretty good. Uh, but I. I do have to disagree with what you said about not evaluating based on the regen at all. Well, I I, I think I altered that. I. All right, fine, go ahead. I evaluate based on the region for the fact that this is, like, an early game card. Like, a 3 mana 3-2, three, it's an early game card. But once again, this is an early game card that you also want to play in the late game. It doesn't matter when you draw it, it can be relevant at both times. Well, I mean... It's and also I, not, good, reason, it's not good in the Azurius deck, because they need the green. I mean, it's a Selesnia deck. It's a Selesnia card. You want this in the Selesnia deck. Right, so I, I don't think... I mean, it's also a fine card in, in the Azurius deck because Detain works awesome with this card. Detain works awesome with everything. Um, but what, but what, I was, what I was really thinking is that this card... Yeah, I mean, you, you do want to draw it late game, but what percentage of the games are you going to be like, okay, now that I have this card, I'm going to win? Like, most games don't go to turn 8, turn 9, where you're going to be able to have this regenerate mana that you're fine using... Um, so, yeah, it, it'll help you in some games, but most games, this guy's just going to be a 3-2 for 3, and I think he's going to be fine at that. So, I think we should move on, unless you have, like, anything you really want to say or anything. Alright, so, um, Seller of Songbirds. Two and a white for a 1-2. Human, common, when it enters the battlefield, put a 1-1 one, one bird token with flying. Cute. So, <laughs> um, I think we, we've definitely talked about this amongst ourselves before, and I think the consensus is that this card's pretty good, and it's a role player in that it gives you tokens, so it's just going to be useful for you. I would just straight up not play it in non-token based decks though. If you're not going to be caring about the token from it, it's not that useful. There are better bodies you can get. 
I like it. I mean, I just like it better than Celestia, dude. It's Celestia Sentry. It's it's, it's mm-hmm. three cost. Um, instead of giving you a three two body, it gets you two three and two different bodies, and I think that's really relevant. I mean, even two, if you're not popular, it's not really two three and two different bodies. Like, yeah, it can block once, but it can't. I mean, it can't just eat a bear. It tra- it trades half of it for a bear. Seller Songbirds being I mean, a it, one it two is almost the like the bird trades with the bear. You keep the songbirds around. So you have a one two. You're not very happy. What are you gonna do with a one two? Um, anyway, it's an okay card. Block and trade with the fencing ace. Block and trade <laughs> with the fencing ace. Yep, that, that's that. There you go. All right, so another one in a white for an uncommon. This one's also another enchantment. So the fifty-seven thousandth enchantment that we've seen. <laughs> it's called Soul Tithe. At the beginning of of the upkeep of enchanted. Okay, it says enchant non-land permanent. I'll go back. Enchant non-land permanent. At the beginning of the upkeep of the of enchanted permanence controller that player sacrifices it unless he or she pays x where x is its converted mana cost so um this card is not necessarily just two mana removal because there is there is the possibility that a they, they just choice. yeah they, they you give them a choice you basically say use this card as long as you want and then you can throw it away so what I think is really annoying about this card is that it scales terribly into the late <laughs> game. Because if you play this card on turn two, then they can say, okay, I'll wait two turns and then I can start playing my spells again on curve. And that could be really relevant if they don't really get to play their spells very often. But then the best case scenario is that you're killing their two drop. So they could just say, sacrifice, okay, fine, you use a two-mana spell, you're in my two-drop, I'm not too unhappy about that. Then there's the thing where you can say, okay, I'll do this to your six-drop. But by then they already have six mana, and tapping six mana every turn isn't always the worst thing. Sometimes they're going to be like, okay, I really need to start playing other spells, so I'm going to have to just get rid of my six-drop, eat the bullet, but... Eat but I mean, bullet, you, usually, the bullet, the you usually don't need to get rid of your six-drop to play other things, but usually if you land your six-drop, you're like, yeah. <laughs> I have a six drop now. <laughs> Honestly, not to oversimplify, but this card is poop. It never does what you want it to do. It presents your opponent with a choice, and they're never yeah. going to take you, the choice that's uh, good for you. Well, you, you want the options. You don't want to give them the options. Right, mm-hmm. I agree with that, and um, generally cards that give your opponent a choice are not good, but what is relevant to note is that if both of the options are bad for your opponent then it's a good card. Choice of damnations. Yeah, um, it, it's just you have to figure out the circumstances when both of them are going to be bad. So anytime you're giving your opponent a choice, it's not very good. Um, I don't think that this card is unplayable. I think that this card is is more in the okay range than the good range. But I think that you'll definitely see this card going around. I mean, going around the table, and you're definitely going to see it on the battlefield a lot. I just wouldn't be too happy to have to play like more than one of these ever. There's also just some silly shenanigans that you could be aware of. If you're going the enchantment deck, if you're running this with ethereal armor and the next card is fear of safety, then they can just make you get rid of this enchantment to make you just lose so much value if you're trying to do the enchantment shenanigans. This actually does combo really well with the next card we're going to talk about, so let's talk about it now. Okay, so sphere of safety, four and a white for an enchantment. Creatures can't attack you or a planeswalker you control unless their controller play- pays X for each of those creatures where x is the number of enchantments you control all right so i don't really know okay it's north i'm just gonna give this i'm just gonna give this to uh to garab here because i have not played with any cards like this ever basically i like this card way more than i should all right as soon if you play it just by itself it's obviously not that great but it's very strong against the token strategies which will be running rampant there will be a lot of token strategies and they're trying to swarm with little dudes, and if they have to pay a mana for every single little dude that they're trying to bring in, they're not doing anything else. Yeah, I mean, but, okay, so it's turn seven, they have seven lands out, who cares if they tap seven mana to, well, to swing it with their dudes? Well, now they're not remember, playing Remember, they're themselves. not playing anything, right. but you are. Okay, same thing with the Elephant Soldier that we didn't talk about. If I you're, if you're, soldier. well, if you're regenerating, then you're not playing any spells. It's basically the same thing. If they're, Which is why I didn't like it. <laughs> However, that's only with one enchantment. Let's say you have just one more enchantment with this. The two mana for every creature you're trying to attack with can add up very quickly. I don't I don't really I mean, I saw Blood Reckoning and that card didn't get played at all. And that was Blood Reckoning is only damage. Blood Reckoning just gives them damage rather than taking away their resources that allow them to play cards. This is I mean, this is true. Life this is, card life will is... see absolutely no play except in decks that are built around it. 
Okay. I, I okay. So I I, can I would agree with that. that. Like I don't think I'll be taking this. This card is a gimmick or, deck. Yeah, mm -hmm. I don't think I'll be playing this card very much. Um, it doesn't really like. Sure, I'll play this card that makes them not attack me, or I can just play all my two twos and three twos and three threes and just kill them. Before but again, that just becomes like relevant. just like with a lot of the white cards we saw, this wants you to get to a later game. Just just think about this scenario for a second though, which is a completely relevant scenario because although it's an uncommon, it's not going to see playing anything except for its own deck. Let's say I have two sphere of safeties on the field. They need to herp their pony long. I don't know. That's that. I mean, they I have to pay four mana per creature. And I only have two. I don't. I don't think that's relevant enough to talk about. It's an uncommon, on turn and it's six. and you're never gonna get more it's than two of them in your deck. It's an uncommon that no one else is taking. How many times do you get multiple gem of becomings in your deck? Many times, and I was sad because I had multiple gem of becomings. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Sun Moving on, the Chapel Ghost. <laughs> no, this is Sunspire Griffin. He's so much cuter. He's one 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 white white for a two three flyer. He does um, not get my key. Obviously, he's just he's awesome. I don't think we really need to talk about him. You're happy first picking him if you need to. He's a common, which is cool. Um, if it, if in a week back you'll first pick him, but generally it'll be it'll Wasn't probably go. Chapel Ghost uncommon. I don't remember. Chapel Ghost was common, I believe. Oh wow. And it, it'll it'll go in like the first first few picks. If you see him like six, then it's sort of a sign, I guess. This is um, my favorite common flyer of the set. Yeah, it's just it's just really really strong. So yep. I don't think we need to spend too much time on it. Let's uh, let's go for Swift Justice. One white for an instant until the end of turn. Tar until the end of the turn. Target creature gets plus one plus zero oh and gains first strike and lifelink. Um, interesting card. It can like really change a race. Just gaining four life in one turn, killing their creature, and gaining you four life. Uh, I said that, and dealing four. De whatever. There's just, I mean, it could be good. It could swing a race. I don't know how often I'll play it, but I, I think know. it's one of the better combat tricks of the set. Um, it does so much for you. I like the fact that it's better than that red card from M13. Kindled Fury. Just straight up better than Kindled Fury. It's yeah. a little better than Kindled Fury. I mean, um, it gives lifelink. I right, I think, but I don't know if it's even going to be better than Kindle Fury because they had, like, Reckless Brutes that you wanted to Kindle Fury and Mog Flunkies, like, cards that are just so well-costed. I that mean, this is just great in any aggressive deck, any, like, aggressive white-based deck, which there are going to be a bunch of. The fact that you just get to do a trick, you get to wreck their creature and have yours live and gain life off of it, too, now. Yeah. Right, I'd rather play Giant Growth. I, think. I mean, I'd much rather play a Giant Growth. Yeah. I don't much rather play a Giant Growth and many other things in many other formats. Right, but it is, I mean, I'm just comparing it because they're both yes. one mana, they're both in the same guild, and they're both instant combat tricks, um, and there's very limited amount of combat tricks you want to, in your deck, probably limited to two or three. Um, mm -hmm. I, don't, I don't really think you ever want to be running four combat tricks no, in your deck, you unless you don't have any removal, in which unless case you're just really the just... Then you're running them as removal. All right, so um, now we have the one mana cat of the set. Definitely one of the cuter cards of the set. It's a 1-1 one, one lifelink. It's terrible. You're not going to run it. It's not. I don't even think it's worth saying, well, if you have a lot of scavenge, then it could be good, because I, I still don't think it'll be good. I think it's just really bad. If you put a million enchantments on it. <laughs> yeah. All I mean, of them named Ethereal okay. Armor. Yeah, if you, put, <laughs> if you put an Ethereal Armor on, and you have, like, one other enchantment out, then you're like, yay, I have a 3-3 three, three first strike for one. And well, first strike realize, likely for one. Then you realize that you put your entire hand into one creature, and then it dies. <laughs> yeah, it's it's just not very good. So let's this move on to the next card. Uh, five and a white. Instant exile target creature, then populate. So instant speed, six mana, get rid of the thing, not destroy it, just get rid of it. It's pretty cool. I like that. Get to populate. So that's basically what my populate test was before. If creatures get indestructible this turn, yeah, I'll take it for three mana. So for six mana, I'll take this card. I'm not like super, super thrilled to play it, but in limited exile target creature, instant speed is good. Getting to populate is cool also. What do you guys think? I think that unconditional kill against any creature, and making it so any of its graveyard relevant abilities are also shut off, is very strong by itself and completely worth a, completely worth a six drop, and I would take it near highly every time. The fact that I get to also make more dudes out of it, this puts it over the top, and I absolutely love this card. Yeah, I was talking with Garib about this card earlier, and I was, I was kind of hating on it a little bit, just because of its high <laughs> mana cost. Um... Although he did, he did bring up his his good point that um you had uh, you had public execution in uh in the core set that was very playable um and that did two things it killed a guy at instant speed for six mana and kind of fogged a little bit and this thing it exiled a thing at six mana and you could populate and I think if you can populate 
I'm very happy playing this. If you can't populate, I'm happy playing it. Yeah, I, I think that you're pretty much just going to want to run this card every time. I don't think you're going to want to run three of them in your deck, but you can definitely be happy about two. It's also important to note that it is a high-cost removal spell with a single color, which means it's if you're lacking removal in your deck, very splashable. Also yeah. at common. I mean, also yeah, common. yeah. you don't really get the populate part, but it is it is still a splashable removal spell. Mm -hmm. Alright, so that's we finished white now, and I didn't really expect this video to be going on for over an hour. <laughs> um, so I think we're going to try to split it up by color, and we're going to move on to the next one in another video. But I hope you guys all enjoyed this, and that you guys should have a wonderful day. Bye. Garab signing off. Adios.